We're so excited to have you join us for the Power Within Summit Refresh. These pre-recorded sessions are jam-packed with tools you can immediately use to transform your life. It's time to intentionally own and use your power. So let's get started. We are back again. You already know I am your host, Alicia Reese, and I am so excited to be in this next session of The Power Within, because if we do not figure out how to tap in and intentionally use our own power, we will live lives that are well below not only what we are capable of leading, but what we were purposefully designed to lead. So I am here with the founder and CEO of Career Thrivers, Brittany Ann Cole. How are you? I am wonderful. I'm excited. I'm honored. Thank you for asking me to join this. Listen, own your power is like one of the mantras in my head all the time. So I am excited about this conversation and this entire challenge. So thank you for hosting us. Thank you for joining me. I always tell people, I don't take it lightly that someone will give you their time. I don't care if it's five minutes of their time. It's theirs. It belongs to them. And for them to be willing and for you to be willing to give me just a piece of that time, I truly am grateful. So I like to say all the time, we are here for a good time, not a long time. Make sure you have your pen and paper handy because there are going to be some very real tools and challenges for you to do. Because one of the things, and I know y'all gonna hear me say this a lot, but I get really, really excited to talk about how you thrive, how you move from simply surviving to now intentionally thriving. And that requires you to, yeah, first own your power. But Brittany, I would love for you to just kind of walk us in first to how do you even start to identify that you might be in a place and space where you are merely surviving and what that even can look or feel like in your body? Yeah, I think um, there are many different clues. One of them that came to mind as soon as you were finished asking the question was that feeling like you're shrinking. And I think of it as almost... If I had to paint a picture of what it feels like, it feels like being crouched down into a small space and not being able to stand up fully. And many of us um, operate from a steady state of that place. I believe if you are in an environment where you aren't able to stand up fully, and that doesn't always mean that you are at the mic, that you are the one in the front or that you are the one leading. But I believe what it does mean is that you're able to operate in a space of one courage, but also confidence in your skill set, confidence in your purpose and with a level of authenticity so that you can know that, okay, I may not have, you know, mastered this area or this skill, but I'm able to figure it out in a way that feels authentic to me. And I think if you if you don't have that feeling, oftentimes it's a clue that you are surviving. I think another clue when I think back just on my own journey of when I realized I was uh, barely surviving instead of boldly thriving, sometimes we don't know that we are. And I think one of the most difficult and challenging forms of grief, and this is just what's coming to mind. And I love that you did not give me these questions so we can have a, like a real conversation. Um, but I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about, I spent 12 years at Pfizer in sales and marketing. My mom died in 2017. I come back to New York. I'm in marketing there. And I remember this sense of like, having this out of body experience that mm -hmm. this career path that I was on and these aspirations and these goals that I had at one point felt foreign to me in this new season. And so I remember having this sense of like, what am I doing? Like, why am I pursuing this? Why am I investing so much time, so much energy, sweat, tears, all the things on this track mm -hmm. that I feel like is not necessarily aligned with where I really want to be at this moment. Mm -hmm. And I okay. think that can be a feeling of recognizing. And that's the, that's the beauty in disruption is that it almost like jolts us back into alignment with who we are designed to be, where you recognize that like, this may have been something that I wanted in a prior season, but I'm yeah. looking at it right now and that's not the path. Right. And so yeah. sometimes that feeling in your body can trigger like, okay, 
I'm in a, I'm in a survival mode. I'm, I'm in a, I'm in a state of survival and I really need to figure out what thriving look like, looks like to me. Yeah. Ooh. And the figuring it out piece. Now you already see it's so crazy. Cause I did y'all, I did not give her these questions ahead of time. Um, the figuring out piece. So once I say you come into the realization, like, okay, I'm simply surviving. I need to figure some things out because I want to feel better in my body, in my experience, um, throughout my situation. I want to feel better in this. So then could you give us maybe one to three, maybe if you got some more, we're going to take that too. Um, but one to three steps that folks can take to once you've identified that, hmm, I'm simply thriving, or excuse me, I'm simply surviving in this space. Mm -hmm. What are one to three steps that folks can use to then start to shift to get closer to thriving with the understanding that this ain't instant. This is not a snap your fingers. I have put you in the microwave. I have set the timer and now it has dinged and we are done. This yeah. not that. Not at all. Yeah, it, it, it's such an inside job, Alicia, because even reflecting back on that time period in my career, everyone else would have said I was in a perfect position. Like I'm in a phenomenal role. I'm in, you know, the city of cities. I'm in the middle of Manhattan. I've got a phenomenal salary, great benefits, you know, married, husband got a great job. Like anyone else on the outside looking in would probably have wondered like, what's wrong with you? You're not being grateful for what you have, right? And even I struggled with that tension of like, is it me or is it this? Like, have I changed my mind? What is it? And so I think w once you recognize that, okay, I am surviving and I define that for me. I don't define that based on mm -hmm. what people say success should look like or what people say mm -hmm. I should be doing. Like once I had that disruption jolt that like, okay, maybe this isn't it, then I, I, I teach a, a framework around real resili resilience. And I think it's so critical for women generally, for Black women specifically, because we are conditioned to walk around, especially in corporate environments, with a cape and a mask. We're conditioned to walk around and be the strong one and to push through it and to make it work. And I was trying to do all of those things. And so getting real is about one, reflecting, right? And so I spent a lot of time just like, trying to minimize outside distraction and, and, and opinions to really check in with like, okay, how do I feel about this? Like, what is the part of this that I don't really care for anymore, even though I used to want this and yeah. what might be a better path for me? So that's step number one of getting real. You, you have to reflect. And then two, you got to start evaluating. You got to say, okay, if yeah. I stay on this path, I was in a marketing role at the time, I'm being pushed towards the next promotion, more responsibility, more time at the office, more all the things, mm -hmm. right? Um, <laughs> or I can start to look for alternative paths. So re like really mm -hmm. sitting down and evaluating what is the decision that you need to make? What are the options that you have? What are the decisions that are on the table for you to get to a place of surviving that feels aligned with who you are in the season that you're in? And then the A of getting real is about making the adjustment, and this is the part, if you high D, if you, you know, super analytical, if you type A, right, sometimes we can stay in a state of analysis paralysis. We can stay mm -hmm. in the reflection and the evaluation and we never make a move. But the move is required in order to get to the thriving. So you have to make the adjustment. And for me, the adjustment was, well, let me go back to sales to get closer to, to, to go back to my hometown, which was Nashville, Tennessee, to support my dad and do all of the things that I wanted to do that I felt were more aligned with the season that I was in. So you have to take action, make the adjustment. And in the L of getting real, ladies and gentlemen, whoever's on, is losing the cape. And for mm -hmm. some of us, that's the hardest part because we're so used to showing up, having all of the answers. But I believe when you're making that transition, especially when you've had deep disruption, and you're mm -hmm. trying to figure out what's next so that you get to a place of thriving, the level of vulnerability that's required to be able to sit with, I really don't know, but I'm leaning this way, mm -hmm. is sometimes a massive adjustment for just how you operate and live your life. Especially if you are the one that's always looked to as having the answers. You're the friend that's giving the advice. You're the mm -hmm. leader that, you know, people say, well, Brittany, what do you think? You know, before everyone else speaks, it can be a shift to say, oh, I really don't know. And I'm not going to pretend to be super woman in my own story to try to figure out or, or really to try to stay in an environment where I am just surviving until I know for sure, right? So those are the, the steps that have really helped me to then be able to say, to have the conversation with my leader to say, you know what? I appreciate 
being on the hypo list and being, you know, nominated for all these things and going to the next level in marketing and spending two weeks in Mountain View, California, Google, and all of this is amazing and I'm loving it. But here's where I am. Mm. And here's what I'm thinking is the next best career move for me. How can we create a path back to sale so I can get back to Nashville? That was a tough conversation at the time, but it was the right move for me. It's the, you just said, how can we create a path? I think that piece right there, the willingness to create a path that aligns best with what is most in alignment with you at that time in that space, that little piece there is the scary piece because it's true. You you might be looked at as, oh, she is ungrateful. We are doing all these things. She is getting all this stuff. Why aren't you happy? Why can't you just be okay with this? And so what is that conversation to step out of the fear of if I go to this leader and tell them that I need an adjustment or I need a change, what is it to step out of that? Like, what was that conversation with you in the mirror? Like, okay, this is what I need. This is what it looks like. What was that like for you? Yeah, I think it comes down to one essential question, and that is from a career context and really just life in general, am I owning my career development? We'll use that as the example. Or am I waiting for permission for someone to tell me the next role that I can take? And so I think that is a powerful question that I had to come to a realization with of like, Brittany, owning your power means in the context of this organization where there might not be a role available. I need you to use the power in your voice to go talk to whoever you need to talk to so they can make a pathway back for you to get to Nashville. And literally that's what happened. And I think what Alicia is so, and I know both of you, both of us work in this space. And so yeah. we know what the calibration meetings look like. We know how leaders come together in a boardroom and literally create pathways for talent specifically. Yeah. Right. And so once you get, once you have a, 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 a a position of leverage within an organization where, you know, and there are steps required, right? Like your performance is there. You've got brain, great brand equity, all the things, right? You're doing your due diligence, right? As most women are. Owning your power looks like, hey, I'm not going to be nervous about this conversation or put it off, right? For mm -hmm. fear of what someone else is going to say when they're not having to live my life. Right. They weren't mm -hmm. on the plane with me every other weekend, traveling back to Nashville, checking on my dad. They weren't in the New York office with me when I was struggling with grief, looking at my phone, waiting for my mom to call. And she had passed like like they weren't they they were not living in that present experience. And I needed a different environment. I needed a different work pace as mm -hmm. well. And anyone that, that works in marketing already knows like it's like this. Right. So I needed something different. And so I had to be the one, right? Like if you aren't willing to speak up and advocate for yourself and for what you need, then we look crazy expecting other people to do it. So like I had to take that step for myself mm -hmm. first and be clear because people want to support you. And that's the other thing that I think sometimes mm -hmm. we miss is like people, and I say this to myself often, especially as an entrepreneur, ooh, child. <laughs> um, but I say this to myself often, like Brittany, people want to say yes to you. Yeah. So all the shrinking thinking and like trash, self-deprecating thoughts that sometimes we have about opening up our mouth and asking for help, people like they're waiting to say yes to you. Give them the opportunity to support you. And that's my job, right? Mm -hmm. That's not me waiting on someone else to offer. That's me saying, here's how you can support me or having an answer to the question when the leader asks, Brittany, how can you support me? I started saying, I'm looking for a pathway back to Nashville, Tennessee, and I would prefer that that be in sales. Can we talk about what that can look like? Ooh, so listen, I'm a firm believer in not blowing up your world because you're having uncomfortable experiences and moments. And like you, I am a let's have the uncomfortable conversation. I think for this particular session, that is actually the challenge where I want y'all, I told y'all to make sure I had your pen and paper handy. But what I would really like for you guys to do is write out your support list so that when someone asks you, how can I support you? You are super clear on what that support looks like. 
and write it out in at least three areas. Write it out in your home life, because I have had people who have asked me, Alicia, how can I support you? And because I wasn't clear, I'd be like, oh, no, it's OK. I'm all right. And then in the next moment, I'm crying because I'm so overwhelmed. Well, ma'am, the life raft was sent. And you was like, oh, no, it's OK. Right. I will provide. Um, he did. You were busy, sis. You told them drowning. and talking about, that's OK. <laughs> so drowning telling the help oh no i've got it that's that take off the cape that was that other tool that you gave us mm -hmm. and so you need a support list not for what you can do for others because many especially type a personalities ambitious folks they got the whole how they can help others i mean we'll jump on board do all the things to their detriment sometimes you need to also be able to open your hands to receive, not always have it face down, passing out and giving. And so the challenge for this particular session is, is I want you to write out a support list. How can people support you in three, OK, three areas of your life? The first one can be home, because I believe if your home life is uh, ultrally disrupted, it will and does seep into your work life and everything gets thrown off. So the first one can be your personal life. What does that look like? What support do you need? Um, you know, are you caretaking? Are you taking care of children? Because those are two very different types of experiences, taking care of, of an older parent and then taking care of a child, they both are equally challenging and also require different different levels and different things from you. So that's number one. Second one is in your role and in your job, what does support look like? What do you need? And if you're confused about, well, I don't know what support, that's fine. What do you need? Ask and answer yourself so that when people ask you the question, you're able to actually give an answer that aligns with what you need so that you can move from surviving to simply thriving. Whew. Listen, I am enjoying this conversation. That's a good challenge. I love it. I love it. Because we, we have to help the people. I, I decided, especially for my birthday, and I thank you so much, y'all, for joining me to celebrate my 38th birthday. But I decided that I've been doing some very intentional work around harnessing my own power. And you said something, Brittany, that was so powerful. And you said, no one else is there in that experience with me, the flying back and forth, the uh, sitting in the office, trying to grapple with grief. No one else is there. So my question is, is when you are in the throes of surviving and trying to figure it out, what does tapping into joy look like when it's difficult to find relief? Because there are so many things that are happening right now in the world, in organizations, um, in our in our own uh, mental health and spiritual wellness. Like, what does that piece look like the, the the tapping into in the yeah i think um it starts with acknowledging where you are you know the, the self awareness piece is critical and again some of us are so conditioned to be all things to all people to make the best of every situation you know all of these some some people call it you know toxic positivity but all all these positive platitudes that are oftentimes don't speak to our authentic experience so we don't even give ourselves space to acknowledge this is where I am. And so I think um, mm -hmm. one, it really starts there for you to be honest with yourself about where you are and to give yourself the space and the grace to move through those emotions. For for me, Alicia, that that part of getting to joy in, in the awareness and acknowledgement was probably one of the hardest parts. That and the, the guilt that was connected to, to my grief, but the awareness piece was tough. And I'll, I'll say this and I can say it boldly because I've said it to my daddy and everybody else. I am a, a pastor's daughter, former pastor, preacher's kid, uh, been one all my life. And um, as a woman of faith, sometimes in the Christian faith and in the cultural Christian faith context, uh, we don't really know how to give people grace and space to acknowledge where they are without the, let me smack a scripture on top of this and like not giving you room to feel. Um, and so I really struggled with that um, early on in my, not only in my personal journey, but in my relationships with my family. 
And for me, getting to joy in those moments looked like me being honest in conversation, but also sometimes and often honest in creating the space that I needed to heal, right? And I believe if you don't deal, then you won't heal. And so sometimes the dealing requires solitude. Sometimes the dealing requires therapy. Um, I believe always the the dealing requires prayer, but sometimes you have to recognize like who in your circle, your community might be you on pause. (laughs) Like we still cool. You still in my core group, but like, you're not yeah, a part of my like immediate, um, you know, contacts in this season of life until I, I can get through this. And so um, that that was a big part of my journey to to you know to joy. And then I think the the second thing, after you are aware of where you are, you acknowledge where you are, is as you're moving through those emotions creating the practice is what I believe it is Mm -hmm. of what psychologists call thought stopping, what the Bible calls taking your thoughts captive. And so from a practical perspective, that looks like being so aware about not only what you think, but how you think Mm -hmm. you're filtering your thoughts and then making a determination about what to do with them. Ooh. And in order to make a determination about what to do with them, what I have found most helpful is to compare the thought to the truth. Right. So mm-hmm. in moments when I was deep in despair and like had like feelings that I like would have never thought I could was capable of having. Mm-hmm. I had to connect that thought or compare that thought to the truth. And your truth might be many things. My truth was and is the truth of God's word, right? Your truth Mm -hmm. might be affirmations or other things, but like really using an outside tool and resource to say, this is, I acknowledge what I'm feeling, Mm -hmm. but then I also have to be intentional about how I am sharpening my mind every single day so okay. that I can have the right perspective and mindset on how I'm looking at this so I know what action to take. And I think it's through that process that you get to joy, but I don't believe it just happens. And I also don't believe that it, that it, I don't believe that it happens without that level of intention, whether you are using, you know, a, a therapist or a coach to get to that place or mm-hmm. whether you are working, you know, internally to say, how can I sh- change the way that I'm doing things, change yeah. my environment, change, you know, the people that I'm having conversations with so yeah. that I can get through this journey. You just gave so many gems. I was writing them down so that I did not forget them, especially the deal so you can heal and then create a process of thought stopping so that you can be mindful and intentional about not only what you're thinking, but how you're thinking. I I hope y'all were taking the notes. I, I, this conversation is a short one, but that is okay. We are definitely going to make sure that we're we're providing um, so much uh, deeper information for you, Brittany, before you let us know where we can stay connected to learn not only more about the thought stopping process, because, oh, my God, um, but also uh, the, the learning and development tools and the uh, the work that you do with leaders, how we can stay connected with that. But before you all leave, I just want to Brittany, you said we need to evaluate where we are. We need to make the adjustment, which requires us to take some action. We have to move and then we need to lose the cape. We cannot keep wearing the cape and you will have to be okay with sitting in the feeling of not having all the answers. Oh my goodness. Please let us know where can we stay connected? How can we learn more, grow more with you? What is it? All the things. Yeah. Listen, well, I believe Maya Angelou said it best. Um, that you know we should have some compassion. I'm messing up the quote. I don't. I don't start it off wrong. Um, <laughs> some compassion, some humor, and some style. Right. That yeah. that you should thrive in your life with those things. And so, um, you know, 
thriving is, I believe it, it can be a constant state. I, I believe that thriving is less about what happens to you and more about um, how you make the adjustments and move through whatever it is. And so um, I've written a book about it. I would say, you know, most of what I'm sharing, I, I never thought I would write a, a book about grief um, ever. Okay. Um, I was writing a completely different book and the Lord was like, no, ma'am, the first one you put out is this one. Um, so Thrive Through It is really about how do we redefine resilience uh, with more authenticity, purpose, courage, and joy. So a lot of what, what I shared today um, is in that book. And then you can connect with me at let's thrive together.com. So there's a free guide for you around authentic leadership development. What does it look like for you to show up and be seen, heard, and valued for who you are and not having to pretend to be anyone else? Um, and we can connect on LinkedIn and Instagram and all the things right from there. So if you head over to let's thrive together.com, we can get connected. And I'm at Brittany and Cole everywhere else um, and at Career Thrivers. So thank you, Alicia, for having me and happy thank Thursday. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you seriously for joining me to help folks intentionally thrive. It is time for us to all intentionally thrive. Make sure if you want this replay that you are joining the community, you can join us at gotvaluenation.com. I look forward to seeing you in there. And Brittany, again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am truly grateful. Until the next session, see you guys. Thanks so much for joining us for the Power Within Summit Refresh. We hope you not only enjoyed yourself, but that you were empowered to change. Don't forget, join the community at www.gotvaluenation.com. There's so much more to come.